Hey YouTube, it's Justin, aka Demonic Sweaters, here with a drum set review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the E-Star EDS-350. Before we get started though, I just wanted to give a shout out to Autumn Tech, who provided me with this cool selfie stick that I'm actually uh, using to film this video with. It's a little tripod uh, selfie stick combo thing, and uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, I'll post a link to these down below. Uh, they're pretty well made, and you can pick them up at Amazon.com. So thanks for that, Autumn Tech. Anyway, let's talk about the E-Star. Let me turn the camera around so you guys can see this. All right, this is the second E-Star drum set that I've uh, taken a look at. The first one was a full-sized, uh, basically adult-sized drum set. And this one, as you can see, is uh, from the picture there, more of a smaller uh, child-sized drum kit. And uh, so, yeah, that's what it is. And the reason why I wanted to do this, well, first off, I'm going to make this review basically in two different sections. The first section, I'm going to open up the box and show you guys how to put it together because I'm sure there's a lot of parents out there that are going to be buying these drums for their kids and have no idea how to put these things together. So I want to show you guys how to do that. And then after I show you how to put it together, I'm going to give you my thoughts and review on it as a kid set. That's going to be the first video. The second video is actually going to be uh, what I'm going to be doing with this drum set is actually using it as an adult. And why would I want to do that is because I live in New York City, and you can probably tell that from the sirens outside, but uh, everything is basically, you know, we're very cramped on space here in New York City, and also I wanted a little drum set uh, to travel about the city with to do some busking with. Um, I had other little drum sets, there's actually one over there, but as you can see I turned that into an electronic kit. And so all the little drum sets that I keep buying, I end up doing something else with them. And so I ended up getting this other one. And uh, yeah, anyway, it's gonna be uh, two different videos, but this one right here is for the parents and, who want, and the people who want to use this for its intended purpose, which is for kids. The next video will be the uh, one uh, with all the weird stuff that I'm gonna do with it. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. All right, first things first, let's do the unboxing. And I believe I got the blue one here. I think they come in two different colors, blue and black. So let's take a look. And, uh oh, that's not good. There's a piece right there. I noticed that, I mean, it's probably okay, but I noticed when it was downstairs in my building, UPS had, they set the box upside down, so. Uh, yeah, anyway. Okay, so, right off the top here, in the top of the box, you're going to see, you know, if you're, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that everybody watching this is not a drummer. So, these are called heads. You may think they're called skins, but they're actually called heads. And these are the part of the drum that gets hit. Not this one, actually, this goes on the front of the bass drum, but we'll get over that, we'll go over that in a second. This is the batter head for the bass drum. That just means the head, that gets hit, okay? And then it comes with a little symbol here. Little, tiny little symbol. And two more tiny little symbols. These are actually hi-hat symbols. And we'll go over what those do in a little while. And these are really, really small. Tiny, so cute. Put those aside for now. Some more heads. Now there are instructions here, it looks like. Yeah, actually not bad. Oh, and some some music notation here. Actually, that's pretty cool. Anyway, we'll check that out more in a bit too. Okay, so this is probably stands. box is kind of, it was a little bit manhandled by UPS, but so far everything looks okay. These are hardware. I'm going to go over all this stuff, so don't worry. More hardware. Okay, now here's, well, let's get on to the drums. Let's take these out. And, well, look at that. It comes with two pairs of sticks. It comes with a small pair uh, for a really little child, and then a full-size adult pair. That's pretty cool. Okay. This looks like it's the snare drum. 
drum sets generally have, uh, I guess, three main drums. And we have the bass drum, snare drum, and then the tom-toms, or toms. So a lot of times there will be one snare drum, one bass drum, and then several tom-tom drums. Uh, so this is the snare drum. And that, oh, I like that finish. That looks really cool. And actually, it looks much better in person than it did on the photos. I don't even know if that's really doing it justice here on the image. Now, these are interesting because, <clears throat> you know, again, assuming you don't know anything about drums, snare drums generally have what you see on the inside there, that little spring thingy. Um, they're usually on the bottom, but they designed this system here to have that on the inside. Then you tighten this little nut here to give it kind of a snare sound. And actually, I think that's really great for kids. And the reason being is it's not on the outside for them to, because kids always want to, <coughs> as soon as they see that thing on there, they want to start like raking it like a guitar and that's going to break it. So that's actually really smart that they did that. Um, so yeah, and it looks like my head, my bottom head on the snare got a little chewed up there in shipping, but it seems to be okay. Um, so also, usually the whites, I mean, it's not always like this, but on this drum set, the white one is gonna be the side you hit, the clear one is the bottom. Okay, let's take these out. These are some hoops, also known as rims. A little bit stuck. Probably because it's upside down, like I said. Okay, so this is one of the tom-toms. And the last E-Star drum set that I had, had reviewed, I was actually pretty impressed with it for the price. And uh, this one, you know, I'm hoping will be as good. So far, everything looks decent. All right, that's one of the tom-toms, really thin. Same nice looking blue finish. There's another tom-tom. This is the smaller one. That looks nice. Another one. This I believe is an eight inch, and that one there that I just showed you a second ago is a 10 inch. Okay, so those two are already put together. That's that's good. This is the top to the throne, the seats. Drummers call them thrones. Okay, this is another tom-tom. This one is called a floor tom because it sits on the floor. This is the biggest one. And that one we're gonna have to put together. And just take a look at the shell. Really not bad at all. Nice looking edges on there too. I've seen much worse edges on name, like, you know, popular name brand sets before. That's actually pretty decent. Set that aside. Okay, one more, we have the bass drum. Now, one of the things that really attracted to me about this set was the size. Um, like I said, they're, they're geared towards children because they're small, but they're not like so ridiculously small that an adult can't play them. Because this is a 16 inch bass drum, which actually, you know, that size is, is playable by an adult for sure. Um, they make adult drum sets with 16 inch bass drums, but it is on the small, small end of things. So that's the bass drum, we're gonna have to put that together too. All right, let's open up this long box here. This is more hardware, I'm sure. So let's open this up. And one thing that's nice about this set that I noticed is it comes with everything. Uh, basically, you know, if your kid wants to start playing drums, it has everything you need for them to start. Uh, and there's a lot of companies doing that. It's not like that this is the only one. There's a lot of them offering stuff like this these days. But at this price, you know, it's pretty good. And like I said, the other E-Star set, and so far, I mean, I haven't set it up and I haven't played it yet. So, so far it's looking nice, so we'll see. Okay, 
Okay, now, this big thing here, um, and remember earlier I was saying hi-hats, the symbols, and again, this I'm just explaining all this for all the non-drummers watching. Uh, this is the hi-hat stand, okay? And so what this thing does, and just make sure you guys can see this, is two parts. So we have the bottom part here and then the top part. So let's deal with the bottom part first. Let me move this out of the way. Okay, so this pedal, this pedal, this little piece is going to have to be secured in here. There's like a little slot for that to go into. So secure that in there and then tighten this wing nut down. You might have to open this up a little bit first. So tighten that wing nut down. Don't over tighten or it'll break. Well, I don't know if it'll break right away, but in general, just don't over tighten. Okay, so that's that. And then you'll have to set this on the ground. I don't know if you can see this. Well, just, I, I'm not gonna do it in the camera because it's too hard, but just set this on the ground and make sure you get it flat and then tighten this part up. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, so that's how that should look when it's the correct way. All right, so now let's take the second part. This is the second part of the hi-hat stand. This top piece right here, this is called the clutch. And this is what is gonna hold your hi-hat symbol, the top symbol. So let's take this off first. Just take that off and set it aside, don't lose it. Okay, now this little post down here, that moves around like that, but that's normal. So drop out the bottom of the post where this you see the screwy threaded part, and then take that and you screw that into this little piece that's inside of the bottom, like this. So that just screws in there. Okay, and then once that's screwed in, put down your hi-hat stand, leave about, you know, it, this can be adjustable, but leave about six inches, six to seven inches on for the post to stick out on the top, and then tighten that up. Okay, and then that's that. Now, we go back to our clutch. Let's loosen this up. This bottom piece. Now, this is a very simple clutch. It's kind of like actually missing one piece that a normal adult size clutch would have, but that's okay. I mean, don't worry about it. But what I would do here is you see how this, this piece has the small side facing down? I would actually turn this around because you want the big side let me just show you what I mean. If you use the small side of that piece facing down, it's not gonna be big enough for the felt. So I would flip that around the other way, personally. Like this. You don't absolutely have to, but I would. And then put one of the felts on and see what I mean. So now it's gonna hold that felt. You know, there's more of it to keep the felt from like smushing up over top of it. So I would do that. Okay, then you take one of your hi-hat symbols, the littler ones, and just put it through like that. Then you put your other felt on the other side, and then take that other piece, and I would do the same, put the big side towards the felt, and then just tighten that up. All right, then it just goes like that. And then the other little one, all you do is you just set it with the, basically the, the bow part, the bell, they call this the bell, facing down. So it's like that. And then you take the other one and you put it on top, like that. And then what you do is you push this down just a little bit with the pedal, like just very little bit, and then you tighten this up. So the hi-hat can go like that. And then when you step on the pedal, that's what happens. So that's the hi-hat. So we've dealt with that, and that seems like a really decent stand. I mean, for kids. So let's set that aside. All right, now let's see what else we can do. All right, so back in our hardware box here, these are floor tom legs. These three, you'll see three things like this. We'll get to those in a minute. I'm just gonna take them out of the plastic here, like that, and set them aside. This is 
a snare stand. Okay. So right here, the snare stand. The snare drum is one of the main drums uh, that gets played most often, that and the bass drum and the hi-hats are pretty much the main things that you keep a beat with. So just like the hi-hat, we're just gonna expand that bass out a little bit. Don't go like this. People tend to do that, don't do that. Leave it like a tripod a little bit, a little bit of space right there, and then tighten that up. Because if it's totally flat, it won't be stable. And then if it's up too high, it won't be stable either. So then take this other end, and you just put that in there like that, and then tighten this wing nut there. Okay, now this has a wing nut here. We're gonna have to loosen that and make this more flat. And then tighten it back up. Okay, and then we'll get to how that worked, like what we put on that here in a little bit. So I'm just gonna set that aside for now too. Okay, now this, this is a special thing for this, uh, this particular drum set. This is a cymbal arm that mounts on the bass drum. It's just a little simple thing, but we'll get to that here pretty soon too. Okay, and this looks like the throne. <laughs> I think I said that before, that's what drummers call them, the seat. We call them thrones. And this thing, it looks pretty small. So if you're big, like me, you might need, might need a different one. But it doesn't look bad though, but okay, and that's all that's in there. Okay, so this, we just open up like we did the other things. Now this one, you can put all the way down like that because it's a different type of base and there's no wing nut here. And this little thingy, uh, this is your post. It's got three holes on it uh, to adjust the, the height. And I'm gonna make it as high as it goes for me, which still probably isn't very high, but I wish I had one more hole in there, <laughs> but it doesn't, so that in there so okay I didn't explain that so you're gonna basically that this goes down inside the base and the hole you just match up with the hole inside the base and then you put this little bolt through there and put your washer on the other end and then the wing nut here okay and then remember earlier we set aside our top to the throne. That just goes on there, like so. And then you just tighten that up. And that's that. And yeah, it is really low. So, but I mean, that's, you know, for kids. So it's the right height. For me, that's gonna be too low, for sure. And I, I don't even know if that'll hold me. I mean, it probably will, it seems solid. Let's test it. Yeah, it'll hold me. So, and actually, yeah, it's low, but I could probably do it. <laughs> Not that I'd want to, but yeah, it's really low. I set it next to my, yeah, it's about a foot lower than the one that I'm playing on right over here. Now I'm st still not sure what this fell out of. Did this come out of the rack tom? Probably, no? It didn't come out of the rack tom, maybe the floor tom. No? Maybe it's just extra. Now see, one thing you're gonna need, hopefully it's in here somewhere, is a drum key. I haven't seen one yet. But maybe it's in here. No, not there. Oh, probably in here. Okay, so this bag is our last bag of parts. Let's open this up. So most of these are bass drum and floor tom hardware. And yeah, there's a drum key in there. Okay, so this is an essential tool you're going to need. It's called a drum key. And it has that little square thingy on one end and just a, you know, basically like a handle on the other end. And this we use to tighten up all of this stuff. So these are all our parts for our bass drum and our floor tom. So let's deal with those now. Let's start with the bass drum. So the bass drum by itself, so the bass drum by itself, before you even put it together, make sure everything 
like I noticed right here, this is loose. So let's tighten that up from the inside. Make sure there's no loose parts. I'm gonna get a wrench and tighten that. That should be tight. I mean, that should have been tight from the factory, so that's a little bit of a... Ah, there's our missing... Okay, that's where the missing wing nut... Well, that probably got knocked loose in shipping then. Uh, so this is the missing wing nut that came out of there. That's for the bass drum spur. We'll talk about what that does in a little while, too. Okay, so let's put that in there. I want to get a wrench to tighten that up. Be right back. Okay. So just make sure these things are tight. For the bass drum spurs. And you want those wing nuts to be pointing the same direction up towards this because th this is the top up here. Make sure those are good and tight. Bass drum spurs are what keep the bass drum stable, so they have to be on there securely. Okay, so let's just make sure those wing nuts aren't gonna fall out. All right, so there's our bass drum. Let's deal with the parts. Now, okay, so bass drums, if you wanna get a better sound out of your bass drum, especially on something like this that has really inexpensive kind of, uh, you know, entry level drum heads. You notice how that's very uh, resonant. You're probably gonna wanna put something inside the bass drum, like a pillow. If you have an extra pillow, and just so happens I have a bunch of pillows here and I could probably use one of these. So I'm gonna go with this one. It's the rattiest one I have. So I'm gonna use that on the inside. And let's go with our, our, remember our clear head is the one we hit. And if you're unsure which side is which on the bass drum, the easy way to tell is here where it says E star, you should be reading that the right way. Like when you're looking down at it and these little wing nuts should be facing you. So put your clear head on that side and the bass drum spur holders should be on the opposite side of the clear head. So let's put that there. And just because I'm really obsessive compulsive, I like to make sure it's lined up perfectly with the logo towards the top. And then we're gonna take one of our bass drum hoops, which are these big ones here. And let's take a look at these. Sometimes, sometimes these hoops will have one flat edge and one round edge, but it doesn't look like this one does. Uh, if it does, put the flat edge down, but this one they're both rounded, so it doesn't really matter. But if there's a seam or something, I usually like to put that on the bottom so you can't see it. Let's put that there. That's that. Now, let's, where's that bag of hardware? All right, uh, where did I, here we go. Okay, so, bass drum parts are gonna look like this. They have this little hook holder thing like that. So all you have to do is just first go around and kind of put them in each one of the uh, lugs around the bass drum. Don't tighten them all the way yet. Just put them in with your fingers.
so once you get one side on, just tightened up with your fingers. Don't worry about tuning it up yet. Flip it over and then throw your pillow inside. You're gonna put in there. What do I do with that one? Is this gonna be big enough? Yeah, actually this is perfect. So put your pillow inside and the pillow, you'd want it to be big enough to touch uh, both heads a little bit, but not like ridiculously huge or it'll kill the, the sound of the drum. Okay, then we take our other head, we put it on the opposite side like that. Okay, and then we just do the same thing as we did before. Get the hoop. You know, again, like, I haven't played this yet, but just like the last E-Star that I did play and put together, this feels really, like, pretty well made uh, for the money. Like, it's not light. This is actually, this feels like a real bass drum. It doesn't feel like a toy bass drum. And the shell was, a re you know, obviously a, you know, well-made drum shell. Just from looking at it, I could tell. That it was very decent. Okay, so we're almost to the last one. All right, now we can use our drum key and tighten these up a little bit. Now on the bass drum, you don't want to tighten it too much because it'll sound weird. You basically just tighten it enough to get all the wrinkles out of it and make sure nothing's gonna come loose when it's being played. Another thing too, though, is once you do tighten it a little bit, it's good to take both hands and push down like that on the head because it'll stretch and then you can tighten it a little bit more. Yeah, it can still be even tighter than that. Okay, yeah, maybe a little bit more. There's still some wrinkles. There we go. All right, now let's do the other side. Same thing. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. You might have noticed me doing it if I did it uh, the last time, but it's best to go, like if you tighten one here, it's good to tighten the one on the opposite side and kind of crisscross back and forth. So that way you get even tension all the way around the drum. Uh, sometimes I don't do it, you know, just because I can usually tell how tight something is tensioned just because I've done this so many times. But, and also you can kind of look at the wrinkles too and see where something needs to be tightened a little more. Sometimes the, the cheaper heads wrinkle eat more easily. So don't get like super obsessive about it if you can't get them all out. On the bass drum anyways, so that should be good. Okay, so there's our bass drum. All right, we're, we're actually almost done. And actually that looks, that looks pretty nice. That's pretty cool. Okay, so a couple more things on the bass drum. We have bass drum spurs that I mentioned before, and these are these little things. So these keep the bass drum stable from tipping over and theoretically from sliding, even though these might not do the greatest job as far as the sliding thing goes. You might have to, well, one thing you're always going to want to do is make sure the drums are on a rug and not like just a little rug that is just big enough for the bass drum to fit on. You need a rug that's big enough for all of the drums to be on. 
because if not, they'll just be sliding all over the place and that'll just make it a terrible experience uh, for whoever's playing the drums. So drums always need to be on a rug, always. 100% of the time, no exceptions. Okay, so just <laughs> thought I'd make that clear. All right, so the bass drum spurs, they just go in these little things. This is the one that I tightened up before. So that goes there. Then we put the other one on the other side. And then that is that. So hopefully these go high enough. Uh, I mean, they're fine for kids, but for my later experiments, um, I'm gonna want them to go pretty high. But we'll see. I might be able to rig something up. Yeah, they go decently high. That should be good for me. Okay, so I can always replace them. But for the kids, they're totally fine. Just make sure that the bass drum, the front of the bass drum, I'm going to have to change the camera to show you guys this. Okay, so for the bass drum spurs, you want it to be uh, even on both sides so it's not crooked. And then you want the bass drum, the front of the bass drum, to be not on the floor, but not up very high either like maybe about a half inch or an inch i'd say an inch probably so let's lower that down a little bit just basically if you can like fit your hand or almost fit your hand under there is your your fingers is probably good so about like that and then you have the spurs in the right position and the reason for that like i said it keeps it stable from going back and forth and then we need to put the bass drum pedal on there, and that's why you need a little bit of space, but we'll do that when we set up the rest of the drums. So, but that's the bass drum pedal. All right, so now we have to put together the floor tom. All right, so now we have to put together the floor tom, which is pretty much doing it almost the same way as we did the bass drum. We have the two heads here, and remember white is gonna be the top, and clear is gonna be the bottom. So these are our hoops. They're a little bit different than the bass drum hoops. So on this one, it's really easy to tell which is the top and the bottom. You know, if that's right side up, the logo, then that's the top. So let's start with the top. Just put our head on there. Let me put our hoop on top of the head, like so. And then these lugs that are left over here are for the floor top. So long screws and down through here. That is really long. Is that right? Is that an extra bit? That might be. I think that's an extra bass drum one. That's too long. Let's see. Yeah, so they included a couple extra bass drum ones. So make sure you don't use those because that'll be too long and that actually could break the drum because if you screw that down in there all the way, it's gonna mess something up because it's, it's, it's too long. So also though, this is the right one. Make sure that there's a washer on there. If there's no washer on there, then find it in the bag before you put it on. Same thing, just tighten them up with your fingers like we did the bass drum, and then flip it over and do the other side. And the floor tom, I'm not gonna put anything inside of it. Uh, some people do like to muffle them, but you usually do that from the top and not from the inside. So let's put on our bottom head. Same way we did the top head.
And they do give you a couple extra lugs in there. The lugs are these screw things, so don't worry. If you have some extra ones, they do that in case you lose some. So that's actually good. Okay, so now we're just gonna do like we did before with the bass drum. Try to get it not too tight, but not too loose. You don't want any wrinkles in there or it'll sound really bad. And crisscross like I did. Sometimes on the toms, you might have to tighten them tighter than you want in the beginning, especially with these cheap heads to stretch the heads out. But then after they get stretched out, you can loosen them back up for a better sound. Unfortunately, this one looks like it got, I don't think it's ripped, but just got a little bit bumped up in the shipping, but I think it's fine. Now you can actually hear the pitch of the different lugs if you tap around the edges like this. So you can tell, I don't know if you want to get into this much uh, you know, detail if you're just setting this up for a five-year-old or something like that. But if you want to, you know, you can make them all the same pitch. There we go. That's better. Okay, now let's do our top. And you could greatly improve the set, or the sound, rather, of this drum set. And I, I know I haven't even heard it yet, but... 100% I know this is the case with any drum set that you buy brand new. If you buy professional drum heads, you know, better drum heads than the stock cheap drum heads that they come with, it'll improve the sound by like a million. But, you know, just for first drum set and playability, these are fine. They don't look like they'll break or anything like that, so they should be okay. Again, remember, we're just trying to get the wrinkles out here. There's our floor tom, and we're almost done. So we have the floor tom here now, just hold it upside down, and we take our legs, and we put them in like this. These little holders here. And I'm gonna make them as high as they can go. And then we'll just tighten that up, the wing nut up. Hold the legs in place. floor tom all right so now i pretty much have everything put together as far as the parts go and now i can actually set up the drums so let me show you guys how to do that okay so hopefully you guys can see all this okay and uh this will make sense but okay so start off with your throne your seat that's going to be where your drummer is going to be sitting okay then we're going to put the bass drum directly in front of the seat because their foot is going to need to go there to play the bass drum. So next we're going to take our bass drum pedal that I haven't opened yet. Oh, this needs a little bit of assembly too, but it's not a big deal. So let's take this out. This bass drum pedal, it's like really small, but it really doesn't look that bad. It's kind of cool. Uh, okay, so this is called the beater. We're going to have to take this out. So the plastic got off of it. And that is a tiny, tiny little beater. 
Okay, and then this goes in this part right here. And then there's a little drum key part there. Remember the drum key? So you have to tighten that up using the drum key, like so. Make sure you get it in good enough to where it's not gonna fly out. But don't push it all the way into where it's touching the metal on the other side. So you tighten that up like that. And then we have our bass drum pedal. Okay, now this, all right, so attach the bass drum, to attach the bass drum pedal, this rim right here, you lift that up a little bit, and then this goes like that. And then you're gonna tighten this wing nut down right here. Now sometimes on some of these metal bass drum hoops, sometimes, and this isn't just with this drum set, I've noticed this on a lot of drum sets, if the pedal, to get it really tight, you might have to put like some gaffer's tape or something or a piece of cardboard and gaffer's tape and tape it on the inside of that hoop to make it a little thicker uh, to really get a good tight grip. Uh, but this one actually seems like it's gonna be fine. So maybe ignore what I just said. But sometimes that's the case, but it seems like this one won't be the case. So just make sure it's good and tight. If it's not tight and it comes loose, Again, that's going to make it a miserable experience for the drummer. Okay. Oh, wait, something's weird here. Actually, if you loosen this a little bit, see, I think that actually does have to do with that rim. Let me see something. Yeah, so, okay. You are going to want to put the piece of cardboard or something there because if you tighten that pedal down all the way, it makes it kind of bend back like that, and then it's too hard to make it hit the surface. So let's find something we can put on there. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a piece of folded cardboard like this. I'm just gonna place it here on the rim of the drum, and I'm gonna tape it down with some pink duct tape, because that's all, the only tape I could find right now. but gaffer's tape actually works better. But again, this is not something unique to this drum set. This, I've been playing drums for 30 years and I've had to do this many, many times. It's just a, something to do with the, the metal hoops because they have a thin spot right there. Don't ask me why they haven't worked that out. So let's just put that there. Okay, now let's attach this. Probably have to loosen it more. Okay, now when we tighten it, it's gonna tighten much more securely and not make it go at a weird angle. All right, now that we have our bass drum set up, let's do the snare. So this was our snare stand, remember? So this is also going to go basically right in front of the drummer. So you need to make sure there's enough space from the seat, then the snare can be right here. The snare goes in between the drummer's two legs and then the bass drum is right here. With their right, or if the right, if the right handed, the right foot goes with the bass drum. And if they're left handed, the left foot would go there and they would be facing like this. So let's go ahead and get our snare drum. Oh, which also, you should probably tune a little bit. So you get your drum key. The snare drum can generally be tighter than the other drums, but don't go crazy, because you don't want to break it. But it's okay if it's pretty tight both top and bottom.
All right, then the snare drum sits in this stand right here, and there's a little piece on underneath the snare, there's a little wing nut that you tighten that keeps that secure. So that's like that, and your snare drum is where it should be, okay? Now our floor tom just goes on the opposite side of the snare drum, just like that. Okay, now let's do our rack toms. The other tom tom drums are called rack toms. And for those, we're gonna need the last pieces of hardware that we didn't open here, which are these things. Okay, so these are gonna go in here. And these things here are actually, they're locks to keep them from sliding. So those you'll adjust depending on how high you want the whole thing to be. So put in your tom arms. It's good not to make all the, the tightening too much until you get them in the right position. Uh, and then you can tighten everything up. I mean, tighten it a little bit so it doesn't slide. But. Okay, so those go like that. Let's do our toms, and the toms you'll probably want to tune as well, because they came pre-assembled, although this one doesn't seem that bad. Yeah, that one is probably all right. Just tighten it a little bit there. Okay, so the little one goes directly in front of the snare drum. Like so. And then the bigger one goes here. See, this one had quite a bit of wrinkles in it, so I just want to get rid of those. Toms, uh, you don't want them to be too far apart from each other like that. That's a little bit too much. So what you can do is have these Oh, I guess you need a drum key on these. Slide that back. You can put this further back like that and then turn the whole thing inward like this a little bit. Okay, now a little note about these locks, these little lock pieces. Uh, let me move the camera here. All right, so just a little note about the, these are the locks. So these basically keep things from sliding and moving around. So you'll notice there's a little, basically like a little lip right there, and that fits into a slot. It's somewhere here on the, on the mount, just have to find it. Oh, there it is around the opposite way. So right there, there's a little slot that that fits in, okay? And then once that's in there, you tighten both the wing nut that's on the drum and this, and that'll keep that good and stable from spinning around. And these are also down here on this part as well. So make sure all those are in there correctly. All right, so now we need to put in our cymbal stand, which just goes right here. And I actually have my toms up 
too high uh, to really use the cymbal stand. I'm going to have to lower those uh, because I, I was th setting them up thinking about me, but I should be doing this as a setting up thinking about a kid. So let's lower these down a little bit. Though this thing I could stand to be a little bit longer because that's not very long. It'd be nice if it could go up about that high, but you know, it is what it is. Slight, uh, lost a couple points there. Also make sure these are tight. I mean, generally just make sure everything's tight. That's always a, you know, a good rule of thumb with drums uh, because you don't want them flying apart when they're playing. Okay, let's lower that down. Lastly, or not lastly, almost lastly, put our symbol here. Like so. That symbol is really low. You can really stand that to be higher. Maybe put it out, face it out this direction. Makes it a little bit better. Yeah, more like that. And I don't even like how that really goes in there. It doesn't feel very stable to me. <clears throat> so I'm not crazy about this part, uh, this cymbal stand part. But, you know, it is very cheap. And you don't really have to use that uh, permanently. That could be like, you know, you could always replace that part later. But, of course, you don't really want to have to replace parts when you just buy it. Uh, but that is a down, that is something, you know, that I'm not crazy about. But we'll move on. The rest looks okay. So, oh, the hi-hat stand. Forgot to show you where that goes. All right, so your hi-hat is just going to go to the left of the snare drum. If your drummer is right-handed, let's lower that snare drum down. It goes to the left of the snare drum, and if they're left-handed, it's the opposite. This, all These two would be switched, everything would be the opposite, but that's pretty much it. And then it's set up. So, not very hard. Well, maybe it is kind of hard if you've never done it before. Um, and I'll probably need to tune these a little bit more. But I'm not gonna play them here in my apartment because they'll be too loud. My neighbors will literally freak out. So I'm gonna wait until tomorrow uh, it'll be like a flash of a second in this video, but I'm going to take them over to my studio and we're going to set them up there and play them. So, see you there. Okay, so here I am in my drum studio and I've got the full set set up here. And yeah, it's pretty cool. I was just playing for a little while. I'm going to show you guys too. I'm going to play some for you guys here. And just wanted to show you that I'm using everything that it came with. There's nothing been changed or added. Uh, I did find a better... A uh, solution for the bass drum pedal there, I put a piece of foam uh, double-sided tape in that little uh, crevice there, and I just didn't peel off the other side, uh, so that way that just fills up that little gap there, uh, makes it a little bit better. Uh, my only real criticism is this. Um, it's not the symbol isn't that bad, you know, for a kid, but I just wish this went a little bit higher. Uh, it's pretty low, even if you have the toms pretty low. It really doesn't go any higher than that. That's as high as it can get it to go. But it's still playable that way. And I guess for a, you know, a five-year-old or something, you don't want things to be very high anyways. So it's fine. So let me go ahead and set up the camera so you guys can hear some playing.
All right, so as you can see, uh, it plays just fine. <laughs> it sounds pretty good, actually. Um, you know, this is perfect for like a five or six year old. Uh, and if you're on a budget, the price is definitely very, very good. It's only $179 uh, and it comes with everything you need to play. And uh, as you can see, even an adult, you know, I'm, you know, 5'11", 170 pounds, and I'm, I'm playing this thing, you know, and it's holding up to me. So I'm sure a five-year-old child uh, would not be able to uh, hurt this thing uh, too badly, and it should hold up to some abuse. So, you know, like I said, my only real criticism is the symbol here and just the height of it, and just I wish it just went up a little bit higher and also felt a little more stable on there. I mean, it doesn't seem to go anywhere when you're playing it, but it's just, uh, I don't know. It, it, that part seems a little bit uh, not as good as the rest of the drums to me. I mean, you could always get another cymbal stand. The high, you know, the cymbals themselves, you know, they're, they're cheap brass cymbals and they're very small, but they're perfect for a kid. And the actual drums themselves sound pretty good, especially the bass drum and the snare drum. I was very impressed with the sound of those two things. Uh, that snare sounds really cool. And even with that internally mounted snare in there, uh, that works just fine. So overall, very good. There's a link down below if you want to pick one up for yourself. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Um, now, keep in mind, this is not a professional drum set. Obviously, this is a child's drum set. But if it's what you're looking for, it's a pretty good one. So anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the bell icon and the like button so you get notified every time I upload new content. And I'll see you guys really soon. Have a good week.